before I go to my next meeting with uh, Kevin from Reimagine Ventures, heading to the Nike store in a TLV, the Tel Aviv Mall here, TLV Fashion Mall, to try to use the 40% discount that, that Nike gave me. I I'm told there's a Nike store here. Never been here, we'll see. spent an obscene amount of money at Nike, and I'm running around Tel Aviv, and I bump into the one, the only. Who are you? Jackie Strap from APAC. I don't care about APAC. You know what your claim to fame is. Oh, I introduced you to Memphis Burgers, which is right here. Memphis Burger. She introduced me. By the way, Ori, thank her. Just saying. They just opened a Petr Tikva. You know that, right? I know. Tiz Kadesh. I'm very excited to go there. Anyway, Becky Strap, APAC, amazing, rock star, big fan, mega fanboy, and uh, yeah, it's good to see you, as always. Nice to see you. Hello. Bye. Pardon the awkward lighting, but this place is not optimized for vlogging. It is optimized though for whiskey drinking, meat pounding, and cigar smoking. Where are we? This is an amazing place. It's a hidden gem in Sorana. I feel like not many people know about it. True. They walk by and they don't. It's the whiskey bar, amazing which place. is also a museum. But if you come upstairs, you can eat, drink, and smoke, and the food is amazing. Look at this place. Super, super cool vibe. And how's the food? That carpaccio, bro. Holy cow! Amazing, one of the best. Ridiculous. Okay, fine. Let's talk. Let's talk business. Who are you? What's your name? So my name is Kevin. How many times have you been on the vlog? By the way, I'm just curious. You remember how many? Twice, three times? Two times, I think. Okay. Twice. Is my it the third time? Third time. Love it. All right. Love it too. Kevin. Uh, Kevin. So uh, originally, I'm from Germany. I immigrated, uh, you know, from Zionistic ideological reasons. That's a dir dirty word today, my friend. Dirty yeah, word. Yeah, no, not for me. I did the army. I was a Love it. lonely soldier, uh, and uh, afterwards I stayed and studied. You're a lonely soldier. You're a lone soldier. Lonesome. Lonesome. I never lonely. I hope you weren't lonely. Never lonely. Yeah, yeah, right. Family was very quickly, uh, uh, you know, folks, the friends, and, 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 and the country. Oh, there. All right. So you moved here when? How long ago? In 99. All right. So you moved here in 99. And, I, you know, I, I don't mean to get too, like, pushing Israel on people, but I'm just going to say one thing. The guy moved here in 99. He was a lone soldier. He didn't know anyone. No. And now you're kicking some serious, serious tuches. Thank you. you just closed a $35 million VC fund investing in media companies. Not only investing in media companies, owning the media space. You own it. There's Thank nobody you. else. Reimagine. Who is your partner? The one and only. Easy Vidra. Who was previously where? Google Ventures. So we're talking like rock stars. Rock stars. Some of your investments are you bananas. Sure. Thank you. Dynamic yield bought by McDonald's. Yep. Site that just raised how much? They raised 20 million. Another crazy, what are some other investments that I know of? So I invested in Magisto, I invested in Minute Media. Wait, wait hold on, wait. Magisto was acquired by Vimeo. Vimeo, absolutely. Okay, and Minute Media. In Minute Media. It's already a billion dollar company. Which is on the way to becoming, yeah, you, you know, a huge, huge uh, publisher. It's uh, uh, it's an amazing company. They own the sports space. I love it, man. They're larger than ESPN and video in the US today. Okay. What's the name of your fund? Reimagine Ventures. Reimagine, what's the website? Reimagineventures.com. Reimagineventures.com. Love it. Okay, so give me your 30 second elevator pitch. What are you investing? What size checks? What's your philosophy? What's your, you know, the whole thing? Absolutely. So we operate like a multi corporate Google Ventures. We have uh, eight, nine corporate LPs that work with us very closely with our companies that we invest in that become clients. Big names, partners. huge names. Sky, Axel Springer, we got Lion Tree in the United States. We have similar to that some high key uh, angel investors uh, from LA, etc., that have worked at the biggest media companies. And we invest in anything in the world of entertainment. So we actually moved away from the word media. It's really entertainment because it's much it. bigger. It can be sports, it can be esports. It's consumer. We invest in consumer. One of the few companies that do early stage seed stuff in consumer. Very early. Yeah. We do e-commerce marketplaces. And obviously, uh, we're in Israel, so we like uh, like the companies to be very technology driven. Love it. Okay, so you don't invest in? We don't invest in cyber. We don't invest in medical tech and not in agricultural tech. Hardware is a yes, no, maybe, you don't it, know? Yeah, potentially. So if you look at the D2C space, often, you know, it involves, uh, you know, it could involve a hardware and it could involve, uh, you know, uh, any kind of other products. Love so it. absolutely. So Lumen is a company I really like. That's a company I would have invested in, right? Just, I literally just met them. Oh, Amazing fantastic. company. Fantastic. So that's yeah. crazy stuff. Great I haven't used that. Instead of going home, I have to unbox it and use it. But you breathe into it and it gives you your whole metabolism. Crazy stuff. Amazing guys. Okay, so yeah, they are, by the way. What's the founder again? Daniel. Daniel what? Daniel and Droll. Both oh, those, Dro 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 yeah. Dro and Daniel. Both okay, yeah. I, I was both thinking Excel. Dro. Love Dro. Okay, fine. So I know Dro from what was his previous company? It was with. Uh, um, yeah, uh, was, with Yossi Valdi investing in that. Yeah, they sold uh, that. They sold it to Conduit or something, no? Yes. Anyway, okay, cool. All right, so 
You've made how many investments to date? We've made six investments to date. So, you, so you're going to make another, let's, let's say, up to 10 max? I think we got 12, 13 max, yes. We're going to have a very much... An additional 12, laser 13? Focus no, no, not an additional. All together? All together, 12, 13 investments. Okay, beautiful. And the check size is up to like a million bucks? Yes, absolutely. Up to a million bucks. Yes, so go now, to here's the thing, right? And I know, here's the pro you know what the problem is? I'll tell you what the problem is. Marketers ruin everything. You know why we ruin everything? Because we, we use words and we make them empty. People are like so used to hearing certain words and they're like, uh, another person saying that stupid like we're going to disrupt we're going to revolution like stupid words right and here's another word that we ruin because we overuse and that is value add vcs right too many right. people say that the truth though is you don't have to look very far because these guys their investors the people that give them the money to invest are quite literally the biggest companies out there i mean axel springer is what number three in the world yeah they're I mean, one of the largest publishers in the world for sure and and we do we have, so talk to our companies right talk to sites uh where we have Three of our LPs as clients. One is developing a new product, actually. Uh, talk to Vault, where we have closely worked with our LPs to develop uh, uh, the product. Um, and, uh, you know, they become distribution partners. And uh, it's something that we that is essential to uh, our DNA at the fund. So, I mean, it is fair to say that, like, I'm going to make a comparison that you're just going to have to take it. I know this. Is, you're going to feel like, don't flatter me, but I'll just say it anyway. Much like the big boys, the Andreessen's, the benchmarks, the, the big boys, that when they write a check, that's just the beginning of the process because their check is nice, but it's literally a fraction of the entire package that the startup gets. If you look at Slack, for example, just to name one example, Stuart Butterfield will tell you that Mark Andreessen's money was nice, but what he did for the company afterwards is everything. Right. When you invest in a company, unlike, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but unlike many investors, period, not only in Israel, but in the world, that when they write a check, it's like, okay, here's your money, go do your thing. You write the check and then you help the company scale. Yes, and we actually do that before we invest already. So it's really important for us. We're gonna meet the founders and we, we don't invest that often, but we make sure if we, we introduce them to all our corporates, all our investors, to clients abroad. We have an extremely strong network in the United States. And and what Andreessen did really well, right, what they revolutionized, they brought this whole value add and, and value creation, what it's called, right, now in the fund business, yep. to another level. Um, and um, obviously we're not Andreessen, we're, we're, t we're a micro fund, but uh, we have the same philosophy, and which is why we are not gonna invest 20, 30 times, which is why we'll, uh, you know, double invest down. with conviction, double it down, it. and Love really it. get to work and and uh, try to you know to, to open doors and and the best founders, the theory goes, will always attract money, and we really want to help them from the seed level to get to round A uh, and looking like superstars and heroes. Okay, so if there's an entrepreneur watching this and they want to know, are you right for them? Pitch pitch them. By the way, this is another thing, right? Another really important thing. Too many investors view it as pitch me, but you know because you're you're humble that you need deal flow just like they need your money. Yeah, absolutely. So when I say to you, pitch a startup, you're okay with that. But if I say to certain other investors in our ecosystem, pitch a startup, they're like, no, let them pitch me. You have no ego. Yeah. You want deal flow, they want your money, this is a win-win. And, and by the way, we, I mean, I, 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 I reply to my LinkedIn messages. It might take some time, but I've met actually a great startup that pinged us on LinkedIn. Love it. Which we're looking at right now. So, right, so you can reach out to me really on any, any uh, media. Can you spell your last name? Because you have a hard last name. Bax, Bax Peeler. B-A-X-P-E-H-L-E-R. Uh, that's correct. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Or you about. find the easy V drive, right? So we really try to uh, get back to everybody and, and you, whether it's a quick no or hey, interesting, send us more and let's meet. I'm just going to say one thing. Kevin Baxpeeler and even an easy V drive sounds like a rock, like people that are like a rock band, not VCs. I'm just saying those names, they don't sound like your typical VC names. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, okay, so if someone's watching this right now, they want to know, are you right for them? Sure. What's the criteria? So we want a strong technical founding team. We are looking to not incrementally change how business is being done in the commerce and the entertainment space. We obviously, just like anybody else, are looking for, for big impact uh, ideas. And where we're then really different is we start even before you want to raise money. You can meet us as early as you want to, pre-seed. We've done pre-seed investments in the consumer space, which is rare in Israel. Uh, so we really get to work before we invest and obviously we're just going to increase that pace after we invest and sh again speak to our founders speak to the companies we work with uh, we're hosting our uh, uh, investors every two months or so and um, we actually just came back from New York last week where we did a mini roadshow in, in New York we were Lion Tree, uh, the, maybe the leading investment bank in, in the TMT space, hosted us and four of our companies, and they all got to pitch and meet Super clients, awesome. corporates, investors. So, awesome. uh, very, very hands on and active, which is why we're only going to make 12, 13 investments. Okay, so a few things. Number one, again, a cliche, but it's true, and that is that if you're raising money, the first thing you want to look for is good people. That's Correct. That's the first thing you want to look These are your partners. They're not 
checkbook. These, these people, are, you know, your investors in theory are going to help you build this company. So you want good people. I can tell you right now, Kevin and Easy are the best. They don't get, you, you don't get better, irrelevant of your money, irrelevant of your experience, just good people. He but, said it. No ego, just good people. That's Thank number you. one. Number two, if someone's watching this, they want to they get in touch with you. Is LinkedIn the best way to do that? LinkedIn, you can, you, we have, we obviously through our website, you can get in touch. We're going to do some new stuff on our website as well that makes it even easier to get in touch with us. Uh, my name, you know, it's Kevin at reimagineventures.com. You Beautiful. can cold email me, uh, LinkedIn, this Instagram, email is right Twitter, there, Beautiful. anything, really any medium you can get in touch with us and we'll, we'll get back to you. Now let's focus on one last important question. How good was that Carpaccio? It was literally one of the best I have eaten anywhere. Dude, anywhere. come here, come here. You want to be tell, famous? Tell me about your second. carpaccio. Come here, come here. S over here, over here. Tell me about that carpaccio. What is on that carpaccio? Is it crack cocaine? Uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> what is that? Why is it so good? Basically, it's a kosher meat, so it's gonna be good. You know. Oh, interesting. Kosher okay. Stuff will be good. Um, it's whiskey, they, right? So you have yeah. a special whiskey sauce. You put a little bit whiskey inside. Really? Yeah. yeah. You like put whiskey on the carpaccio. No, the carpaccio. The, the dark is soft. Get out of here. Like, yeah. Dude, that carpaccio was bananas. Yeah, it, it was is. incredible. Tell me about this place. What, you give me some information. When did you start place open? So you know? the place started like three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. Okay. How many whiskeys are in this joint right now? No. So here, no, when, so the whole, it's the like one fifty. Downstairs we have over twelve hundred. Give it a take. So all together you have like almost fourteen hundred whiskeys in this place. No, right like now. basically in total we're twelve hundred, but different bottles. Uh, twelve hundred whiskeys. Yeah, different wow. bottles. By wow. the way. Incredible. Uh, the place opened like three years ago. You open every day from 12 o'clock? From 12 o'clock, yeah. This is the cigar bar, and downstairs it's a restaurant, so open from 5. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, we have another location in Prague. If somebody in I Prague. Didn't know that. Same thing. Hello. Same idea. You go downstairs. Who are the owners of this place? Who owns it? Do you know uh, names? Mati? The owner is a partner here, you know Mati? Yeah, I, I don't think Mati, his name is uh, Matanel maybe? Yeah, I call him Mati, yeah. I don't know. Okay. okay, anyway. You're a friend of him, he's my boss. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Yeah. We love Mati. So, yeah. Okay, so listen. So he's one of the owners. He this came place, with all the idea. super duper unique, and truth is, you don't do very much marketing. I feel like no, many people don't, don't know. To. We go to a specific audience. Yeah. Uh, it's not like for everybody. Do you have a website? We have a website. What's yeah. the website? Uh, whiskeybar.co.il. Whiskeybar.co.il. I, I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, check it out. If not, just Google Whiskey Bar Sarona Tell Instagram you. too. Yeah. Inst oh, your Instagram? Yeah, we have Instagram. Oh, that's awesome. All right, cool. I'm going to tag you guys on Instagram. Thank you very much. Amazing service, my friend. Yeah, thank, thank you. We'll be back soon. Enjoy the stay. Delicious. Kevin. We should do this again soon, man. We shouldn't literally, wait that we, we have a lot of fantastic. a lot of common interests. Yes. We share a lot of, you know. Yes. But listen, dude. Anything I can do to help you, let me know. Awesome. I want to send Thank you tons you. of deal flow for and sure. If you just want to come out and talk or get advice or just meet Axel Springer or Sky or any anybody in that entertainment world, even if you're not looking for money, we're happy to help and open the doors. Ping the dude. He means it, by the way. He'll actually deliver on that we promise. We do that all the time. Love it, dude. We'll do it again soon, man. Thank you for your time, my friend. Thank you. Awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. Heading to Jerusalem right now to meet the absolutely legendary Rusty Brick, Barry Schwartz been blogging before I knew what the word blogging means. I'm trying to get some light. Bat, you can come over here. It's all right. No, I'm trying, this is like, there's no lighting here. It's a big problem. Here, come say hello. Who are you guys? Isaac Farbowitz. Who's this good looking guy? Eric Farbowitz. Welcome to Thank Israel. You. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to be Barry right now. You know Barry. Yes. We're going to eat, eat an Angelica. Good stuff. It is an utter, utter embarrassment. Utter, utter embarrassment. I'm up to episode 390. And Rusty Brick, the one and only Rusty Brick, has never been on the vlog. That's it, I'm out of here. You should be ashamed of yourself, man. But you made up for it because you have an epic goatee. All right, so we are out in Angelica in Jerusalem, one of the best restaurants. Let me see if I can show you some pictures here of what we just consumed. I am now going to open my phone and show a picture of the picture of my steak on my phone to the vlog. Look at that. Oh, baby. All right, so it was... How's the food? It was amazing. I had a burger. It's good, right? Yeah, a very well-cooked burger. Yeah, we, that's like not okay, but we're yeah, not okay. working on you. Okay, so how long have we known each other? Probably close to like 14 years. Yeah, maybe. like that. that makes sense. So you wear a lot of different hats. You wear a lot of different hats. We all wear a lot of different hats. We wear a lot of different hats. Yeah, pun intended. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. All right, let's start with the fact that I think, objectively speaking, I don't think this is like an opinion. I think you're objectively the world's top blogger on search. You you, you, you won't admit it, but I'll it's say it. It's a small niche, yeah. No, but let's start with the fact that, when did you start blogging? 2003. So in 2003, like, was blogging even a word? I was one of the, yeah, I was probably one of the first blogging people, bloggers out there. I remember being on stage, I remember Jeremy Zwani from Yahoo. Nope. He was like one of the first bloggers. Okay. And we, we stared at like a stage in front of 5,000 people speaking about blogging. What were you blogging about in the early days? Still, search. What, what was there to say? How did you start? Google's wonderful. <laughs> no, literally, how did you start? How did you get into I wanted to, I love the search engine community, the SEO community, the whatever search marketing community. I just, it was my notebook for what's going on in search. Very interesting. Okay, so you started, you said 2003, so that's 16 years ago. 
Yeah. Okay. So now you, I mean, you've quite the following. How many followers do you have on Twitter? 125,000, something like that. So you're, you're like legit, I mean, a celebrity online, bottom line. All right, so now recently you've kind of gone over to the dark side and started vlogging. Yes. What do you have over here? What is that? That's just, this is, the, this is my vlogging camera. Who recommended that to you? Who recommended that gadget? I saw you post a picture about this and other people as well. You hear that DJI? It's, I, I had to pay it? for it, yeah, but it's worth it. They said to do? No, I paid for it. You did pay for it. Incredible. It's a DJ, DJI Osmo Pocket. Awesome. So I, I'm recording us with being. Recorded. Are you recording right now? That's awesome. Okay. All right, I'll put it away. So, no, you can, it's fine. All right, so you, you do interviews on that. All your interviews are on that. All Which, interviews where's the audio, though? I plug it into here if I need to. The audio quality on this alone is bad. You know that. It's garbage, yeah. So I, I plug something yeah, into but you it. see that you're cut off right now. It's following you. So. Yeah, it's doing face. There you go. Talk to me about like the the evolution of your blog. Like, first of all, what's, what's the where where do people follow? Where do people read you? Search Engine Roundtable and Search Engine Lens, and follow me on Twitter at Rusty Brick. But you, I mean, do you have? Pardon my ignorance. I know I should know this. What's your like home? Like, what's where's your blogging? It's, um, you can find it. Follow me on Twitter, and you'll get a lot of stuff. But you're, you don't have your own blog. My my own blog is Search Engine Roundtable. It's mine. That's, that's yours. Okay, got it. Because that's already a big site. Yeah. Okay. I mean, also have RustyBrick.com, which I don't post much on. Okay. So, th so that's one hat. Then there's the other hat of Rusty Brick. Yeah. What's Rusty Brick? We Where did the name come from? I've been wanting so, to know this for a decade. So my my twin brother, which you don't you don't you just found out. Just about. found. I've been 15 years we're friends. Yeah, I just found out his twin brother. It's not a secret. He's Crazy. out there. Yeah. Um, in high school, we came up he came up with the name Rusty Brick based on his initials. It was just two words put together. It means absolutely nothing. You can make a story up that we build software and there's bricks and construction. Cool. If you want. All right. We built custom software. Okay. You built some really interesting things. Like on the iPhone, the leading sitter app, like Prayer Book, is you guys. Yep. Um, what are some other apps that you've built over the years? So we've built like 30 Jewish apps. Um, we don't really make money on that. It's not paying my tuition bills. Right. Uh, but um, so a lot of that's good to back the community. We, um, in the Jewish world, we built the Art School app, which is pretty cool. So that's that's the translation of all the Talmud. The Talmud, the Seder, they all, tons of, a lot of their books. Are you work with Art School on that? We work directly with Art Rabbi Zlotowitz, who's the late Rabbi Zlotowitz. So awesome. um, he's an amazing guy. Um, Rusty Brick has been in business for how long? Since 1994, unofficially. We're in high school. It's great. Easy, by the way. Yeah, we were 14. How many employees do you have here? About 20 something. Wow, and it's based where? In Muncie? Um, technically West Nyack, New York. It's Never near Rockland County. Near Love Muncie. It. Okay, so so what's next for Barry Schwartz? That's what I want to know. What's next? Like, where are you going? What's your what's your end game? Where are you going with this? There's no real end game. Just keep doing good things, trying to help out the community. Help yeah, you're having a good time. You enjoy it. Yeah, I love the SEO stuff. I love building software to solve problems. Sell me on SEO. Sell you on it? Yeah, why? Why do you why do you love it so much? It's constantly changing. Google algorithm is constantly changing. I love watching the community follow what's changing in search and how they can actually utilize search to help their clients do better marketing. Fascinating you would say that. I had a meeting with Microsoft execs a couple of weeks ago and I said, Microsoft, from my perspective, is the most interesting company. And they were like, why? And I'm like, because, you know, Apple's cool, whatever, Google's cool. Microsoft, first of all, just look at their stock. I mean, it's just constant growth. But more importantly, Microsoft, more than any other company, in my humble opinion, constantly reinvents itself. Think about it. What is Microsoft? They were. Uh, you know, a Windows operating system. Operating system. Then they became a services company. Now they're a hardware company. Yep. Right? They're always, re I love that. Wait for that search, yep. That's interesting. Yeah, well, is Bing? Bing is, I mean, they're growing. They're, it's nice. Is it? Um, I've never had They keep saying their market share is 30%, but it's, if you look at your analytics, it's like, what, 2%? Yeah, like, who uses Bing? There are people, I mean, especially, Why? Google's getting a lot of negativity these days, mostly funded by DuckDuckGo and those, and Yelp and stuff. Right. But um, also, like, I don't know, I just feel like Bing, I don't know. I don't know. They have very smart people there. And Satin Nadell, the CEO oh, of amazing. Microsoft. He's brilliant. What he it was is born and raised a search not born. He's a search guy. Right. He ran Bing back in the day. Interesting. And then he became CEO. But he knows search inside and out. Very interesting. Alright, so bottom line is you're gonna keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna keep building apps, you're gonna keep uh, you know owning the search space. What like what do you what would you say to an entrepreneur who's watching this who's all like, you know, oh, we gotta be on social media? What do you what do you have to say about search? Sell them on the importance of search. The importance of search? Yeah. I mean people are searching. Everybody searches, you do it or not. You know, search is embedded in everywhere in your life. On your phone, you can search. Google's on your phone. It's all over the place. It's gone it's in your car. Are you talking to your car these days? I talk to my car as I'm driving. I mean I did. Plug it in I car play. Siri. 
Yeah, so like yeah. most cars these days, new cars, yeah. have Siri or, car, or uh, Android Auto built into it. Right. Uh, it's everywhere. It's going to be, it's in every appliance, it's in everybody's, search is important. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back on that because you did a very bad job selling it. I'm going to sell it. I hate selling it. All right, so I'm going to sell it right now. You're a marketing guy. Here, here we go. You ready for the sale? You tell me if, if you think this is an accurate pitch. This is what you pitch. think for a living, right? You tell me if this is a good pitch for sale, for, for search. You ready? Yeah. If I'm on social media, I'm constantly being pushed things. I'm constantly being... Things are yeah. shoved down my throat. I'm like not interested in your, yeah. right? Whereas if I'm searching, I, the intent, I have the intent, I'm searching for something. You don't have to sell me on it because I want it. I'm looking for it. That's a fundamental difference. Like the, on the, like the, the, the spectrum of from, you know, the beginning to buying something is much shorter on search. I went and I actively searched for well, something. Well, it depends on the search, but yeah. I mean, people could be, mean? I mean, you could be looking for a camera and search for camera, yeah. or you could be looking for a specific model number. You Correct, specific but model. I'm still looking for a camera, whereas on, on Twitter, someone's selling a camera, it's in my feed. I didn't look for a camera. Well, maybe you did. A lot of Twitter uh, and Facebook ads are remarketing. Well, that's already searched. Um, not necessarily. You visited a B&H page. Right. That's true. Oh, it's remarketing. Yeah. And then... <laughs> <laughs> totally sponsored, by the way. That wasn't clear. B&H sponsored the um, blog. And yeah. then you go back, you, you leave the page and then they follow you around for 30 days. Love it. Been, been a fan for a very long time. I have one and only one ask from you. Yeah. You used to run a search conference in Jerusalem, SMX. Yes. It was one of the best conferences of the year, maybe the best. Fundamentally enjoyed it. Till today, I'm friends with people that I met at the conference. You stopped. Can we re... I'm working on it. Yeah? Hopefully 2020, yeah. Really? I hope so. You heard it here first. SMX.com, is that the... Uh, that's just Google SMX. Search marketing SMX. Expo. All right, let's bring it back. Let me know. How I can help with that, and you know, we'll find you the venues, we'll do it, whatever, and that's until you move to Israel. We're working on that next. Next year. Awesome, dude. Let's go have dessert. Thanks, dude. Today was one of the craziest days. Jam packed from morning to night, ending it with the Rusty Brick. See you tomorrow.